Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. The Daily Compliance News for October 11, 2021, the Facebook Talking Points edition. And we begin with that story from the New York Times as Facebook has distributed to its employees talking points uh, to how to respond to friends, family members, and the general public who may raise questions uh, on from them about the testimony of the whistleblower last week. This is a very interesting uh, response by Facebook and clearly shows they intend to fight these allegations. Uh, They have come out and uh, said these allegations are demonstrably false. Of course, they haven't uh, said or really showed how they're demonstrably false. So Facebook uh, doesn't seem to understand the, uh, the problem they have, both in terms of public relations and substantive problems, and uh, they're not going to switch. They're going to fight. Uh, next up from the Wall Street Journal, corporate taxes are poised to rise after a 136-country deal. Nearly 140 countries agreed to the most sweeping overhaul of global tax rules in a century. The reform sets out a minimum global corporate tax of 15%, targeting at preventing companies from exploiting low-tax jurisdictions. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the floor set a global minimum was a victory for the U.S. and the ability to raise money from companies. She urged Congress to swiftly enact the international tax proposals it has been debating which would help pay for the president's uh, programs. Next up, the Federal Bank Reserve's Leal Brainard expressed some impatience with the state of climate change financing policy. She said it's the banks likely need direction from regulators on managing climate risk. And I would say uh, on a greater, not simply climate risk, but to... Um, go further to uh, manage ESG risks. But nevertheless, Ms. Brainerd's remarks are notable in part because they're seen as, she's seen as a potential candidate for the Fed's vice chairman of bank supervision, succeeding Randall Quarles, whose term expires. Uh, This would also be a uh, set her up as a potential candidate for, to succeed Fed chairman Jerome Powell. She said climate change could have profound consequences for level growth trends and viability of economic activity. And it's a stark reminder that events can materialize with little warning, although there's been lots of warning about this issue. And finally, uh, along those same lines, also reported in the Wall Street Journal, finance chiefs are spending much more on carbon offsets to try and reach um, ESG uh, targets and bolster green uh, credentials. This really is important for the compliance professional because it demonstrates a wide variety of ways that uh, you can reach uh, ESG goals and climate change goals and carbon capture and carbon taxes are certainly one way to do so. And that uh, if there are ESG goals and other ESG goals and risks that uh, are available to you, you might take a look at a wide variety of alternatives as a way to move forward, particularly for investors in this area. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.